everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm Anne from the Sussex Handmade Sew Company and today I just want to cover a little bit about polysorbate 80, what it is and why we personally don't use it in our bath bombs. And I'm recording this video today because we have actually just uploaded our first bath bomb making video and I have preempted the fact that I'm probably going to get people questioning why I don't use polysorbate 80 and whether our bath bombs are still going to be okay to use because they don't contain polysorbate 80. So I want to begin by covering what polysorbate 80 actually is. Polysorbate 80 is an ingredient and it is an emulsifier and what that means is it will help oil and water to combine. And the reason that a lot of people use it in bath bombs is if they are using oils in their bath bomb such as grapeseed oil or coconut oil or cocoa butter or something like that, when the bath bomb is dropped into the bath, if you haven't used an emulsifier, then it is likely that the oils in that bath bomb will not mix with the water because oil and water do not mix and instead they will form a layer and sit on the top of your bath water and potentially cling to your skin and be not especially nice to feel, they'll be kind of greasy, kind of slippery. Um, and also potentially when you are getting out of the bath, you're gonna have a layer of oil that's gonna make your bath really slippery. Polysorbate 80 being an emulsifier means that it will help the oil and water to combine so the oils will not pool on the top of your bath and it won't be super slippery. It's still going to be slippery to a certain extent because it's a bath and it's got water in it so you know you're going to have a little bit of slip but not nearly as much as if you didn't use an emulsifier. And that is the reason why a lot of bath bomb makers who do include extra things like the grapeseed oil or the coconut oil inside their bath bombs or even fragrances, you know, things like essential oils or fragrance oils, you will often find polysorbate 80 being recommended to be used. Um, we do not use polysorbate 80. And the reason that we do not use polysorbate 80 is that I cannot source any polysorbate 80 here in the UK that hasn't been derived from palm oil in one form or another. Um, I'm not saying it is impossible to source palm oil free polysorbate 80. Um, I believe it is available in other countries. I think I saw it available in Australia, but they wouldn't ship to the UK. And even if they would, shipping would have been ridiculously expensive. So personally, I cannot find palm oil free polysorbate 80 here in the UK and if you know where I can get it in the UK and you have a link please drop that into the description box because that will open up my options for colouring bath bombs with different kind of dyes and things in the future which would be great so if you know of palm oil free polysorbate 80 in the UK please let me know. Um, we are a completely palm oil free company. We don't use palm oil or anything that is derived from palm oil. And so when we were making our bath bombs, obviously it was like, well, we can't use polysorbate 80 because it goes against um, what our company is all about. And a lot of people who shop from us do shop from us because we are a palm oil free company. So using polysorbate 80 for us was completely out. So we had to find a way around the fact that we couldn't use polysorbate 80 and formulate our recipe with the knowledge that we weren't going to be able to use polysorbate 80. So we've made a few little changes and we have tweaked our recipe and we've come up with something that actually works. You know, we don't get oil pooling on the surface of our bath water. Our bath isn't overly, overly slippery when you get out of it and we don't get colours kind of clinging to our skin or anything like that. And what we did to create this recipe without the polysorbate 80, but without any of the hazards of not using polysorbate 80, is firstly, we are using SCI powder, sodium cocal isothionate powder, and that itself is a surfactant which helps to create the bubbles, but it is also an emulsifier. It's not going to be as strong as something like polysorbate 80, but it does have emulsification properties, so it will help oil and water to combine. So that is one key point. We used another ingredient that can also act as an emulsifier. The second thing that we did is we reduced the amount of oil in our recipe to kind of the bare minimum. We do use oil in our recipe. We use fragrance oil for scent and we also use some grapeseed oil to help bind our bath bombs and also just because it's kind of nice for the skin to have that little bit of extra oil in there. Um, but we have kept those to a minim minimum. So we haven't gone overboard and added loads of extra oils in. And we have found 
that in the amounts we are using, the actual emulsification properties that the SCI powder has seems to be more than enough for our oil and water to actually combine. As I said, we do not get oil pooling on the top of our bath or anything like that. The second thing we have done is when it has come to colouring our bath bombs, we have chosen to go with water soluble dyes. There are a couple of main options for colouring bath bombs. Water soluble dyes is one, and you can also get lake colours. This is among many other different ways of colouring, but I would say water soluble dyes and lake colours are two of the main ways of colouring. Lake colours are actually oil dispersible. So they disperse in oil. And if we were using lake colours, there is a chance that they may end up clinging to the skin or they may you know, collect round the rim of the bathtub. Um, so we chose to use just water soluble colours because they will dissolve in the water and they will easily wash away with the bath water, which is great. Um, there are a couple of bath bombs, I think there's three that we have designed, where we actually paint a small amount of mica on the top of the bath bomb. Um, that is such a small amount and I have tested this many, many times. It is such a small amount that it doesn't cling to the skin and it doesn't really cling to the bath either. I say I've done numerous testing. Um, a couple of times there has been a very, very small amount of mica just on the base of the bath. But what I have found is that as long as when the bath water is drained, I clean that bath down straight away, there is no staining, which is obviously what we want. We don't want to stain people's baths. Um, I also did a test where I didn't clean my bath down straight away deliberately because I wanted to stain my bath to see how easy it was to get staining off. Because when you're developing products that other people are going to use, you want to know any possible scenario. Um, you know, worst case scenario, somebody stain their bath and they're coming back to me and asking what they can do about it. I want to know what the answers are. So I deliberately stained my bath with a little bit of mica and I realised that using something like SIF bathroom cleaner and a lot of elbow grease and scrubbing, it was actually possible to remove that staining. So in the worst case scenario, I know that staining can be removed. But as I said, wash the bath down once it's been, you know, once it's been empty, don't leave it sitting, clean it down straight away. And we didn't get any staining with our bath bombs or any colored rings or oil pooling around the side. So that was good. So that is how we make our bath bombs without any polysorbate 80 and how we have managed to formulate our own personal recipe to, in my mind, not actually require the use of polysorbate 80. I know there are a lot of bath bomb forums out there and a lot of the people in those forums will tell you if you are using oil, you absolutely must use polysorbate 80 or, you know, your oil's going to pool on top of your bath, it's going to be slippery, you're going to get dyed skin and, you know... I have to go out on a limb and say, from personal experience, I disagree. I think it is possible with care to formulate a bath bomb recipe where polysorbate 80 isn't absolutely required. Um, and just by taking a few of the steps that I've mentioned in this video, obviously if you are using lake colorants or micas or lots of oil, then you will want polysorbate 80. But with the water soluble dyes and with the smaller amount of oil in the recipe and using another ingredient that is also an emulsifier, like in our case, the SCI powder, um, from all the testing we have done, and we have done so much testing, you know, super rigorous testing on this because it was one of my concerns. We have done so much testing and all of the testing we've done is come back and it has worked. So, you know, it's possible. So don't necessarily take too much away from when people tell you that if you don't use polysorbate 80, they're not going to work because they can work and there is a way around it. So that's just my little explanation video today on why we don't use polysorbate 80 and what we have done to our personal recipe to make it so that we don't need to use it because I am preempting I'm going to get questions on this topic as soon as our bath bomb video goes live which it just has because I'm putting this video live at the same time as our first bath bomb one. I just wanted to cover those points so let us know your thoughts on the use of polysorbate 80 and anything you do that is a little bit different to the kind of standard that everyone seems to go with because it's always nice to see other people's ways of doing things and different kind of tweaks you've made to to your own recipes. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoy our content, do subscribe to our channel and we shall see you next week for some more bath bombs, soaps, behind the scenes. It'll be something. We'll see you then. Bye.